G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Yeah. Alright, Saturday morning here in, Austra uh, in Australia and the market is down. So again, we're up near that $2.7 trillion and now we're down near that $2.5 trillion. We have taken a pretty good correction there. Now there's options and all sorts of things that are ending today over in the States. Uh, so there's a few different things going on, but again also... You know, it's the end of the year. People are going to want to take some profits to spend on holidays and Christmas and things like that. And it's already been spoken about before. You know, big companies, hedge funds and things like that are going to want to take some profits to pay their taxes and things like that. So I think that's what's going on. And as I said yesterday, I do think it's quite possible that we have a a reasonable size correction. I mean, 5.4% already. I think it could get a little bit lower. How much lower? I mean, that's going to be, you know... That's the million dollar question, isn't it? You know, if everyone knew exactly how much lower or higher it go, could go, then, you know, you'd be able to make a lot of money. And I must stress, as always, I'm never offering you financial advice. I'm simply just giving you my personal opinion. And that's from someone who's been in the space for a little while. All right. So again, 5.4% move down. So 2.69 sort of trillion down to 2.54 trillion and i do think it's possible that we go lower i'm not sure we're going to get this big move in the altcoins we've already had altcoins doing pretty well i just don't think we're going to get this big kind of blow off top kind of thing happening in december again simply because too many people were expecting that if i'm wrong i'm more than happy to be wrong i'll admit i'm wrong and you know like i've said before my bags are packed i'm ready but at the moment, I just think things aren't going to go too explosive. And I'm going to show you a coin that I am uh, collecting on. And again, I've been telling people about it. Never financial advice because I could be wrong. But it is something that I am buying at the moment. And look, I'm happy to buy Bitcoin at 53000 And I will buy it all the way down to the bottom of wherever it goes because it's been at 70000 So it's also already a big discount. You know, we're... That's just the way, you know, smart investors will do it. Now, again, I'm not saying $53,000, $53,729 is the best price to buy it. I've got no idea how low it's going to go. I've got, you know, I, I won't say no idea. I've got some ideas, but that's all they are is they're just ideas. No one truly knows. Not even the smartest people out there pick it every single time sometimes they get lucky and they'll be able to pick the tops and bottoms and all the rest of it but that's more what it is it is luck and an educated guess all combined but no one truly knows so for me a bitcoin are basically nearly sort of 20 percent from its old all-time high i'm happy to buy it and like i said i'll continue to buy it down because eventually when it does come back to fifty i i'll have bought again a whole stack more and then when it starts to make its move up from 53 to 53,000, it's exponential. The price just really starts to move because I've built such a good base. But again, that's me. All right, Bitcoin dominance has actually risen a little bit. It says it's down, but this was under 39% yesterday when we looked at it. And now it's 40%. So again, kind of hovering. There's a little bit of volume here. Again, the weekend's getting close. People are going to buy the dip. We'll have to wait and see. But Bitcoin price... 53,000 so under 54,000 just and I think we could be going a little bit lower and gas prices again nice and cheap people are kind of not really sure what they are wanting to do at the moment a bit of an indecision market and look that's fine but look it's basically a sea of red there's not a lot of green there but we can see there is some there's always outliers and Luna still continuing to do well I'm waiting to see if Luna can push up and break that hundred dollar mark I'm not 100% sure it can, but it is just something I'm keeping a lookout for. So, all right, what's done well in the last 24 hours, considering the market's down? So there we go, Adam, nice pump. There we go, $32, uh, up 15%. Near Protocol, up nearly 12%. Matic continuing to move, $2.31, 11%. Again, I was telling people about this, the good projects, you want to buy them when they're just, they're not hot. Because eventually, if they're still a good project, they will become hot again. They continue to innovate. They continue to develop. They continue to get partnerships, all those kind of things. And that was Matic. And I get the feeling like Matic is going to head up towards sort of $5. Now, I'm not saying it's going to do it overnight. And if we have a big correction in the market, then <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. Matic's not going to $5 in a big correction in the market. But my prediction is Matic will get between 5 to ten dollars 
in this bull run. Now, again, I showed a thing where imagine if Matic, you know, did what it did before and it could go to $272. That is possible. I just don't think it's likely. I think the biggest move has already come from most of these coins. And when we get that final blow off top, you know, again, I think another kind of, you know, two to five to maybe even 10x from here is possible if we have really big blow off tops but i think matic basically doubling its price from here uh, is quite easy if this you know bull run continues so for me i'm really looking at kind of the five ish dollar range to possibly even ten dollar range in this cycle but that's not to say it couldn't go a whole lot higher than ten dollars but that's not to say it will even make it to $5. That's just what I'm thinking. I will be taking profits along the way. I'm not simply waiting for $5 because it may not make it there. But I do think that $5 is probably pretty realistic. But again, you know, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. Now, we don't have too many movers considering the market is down. But look, we've got a couple. There's three nice double-digit movers. And then again, a couple of single-digit movers. But it's mainly red. So now that's what we've got to look at considering the market is down. All right, Gala getting absolutely destroyed. I must have bought Gala at a near all-time high. But again, I still like Gala. I'm going to continue to buy the dip. I needed to get a better position in the metaverse i mean i had a good position in engine engines come down and look that's just the way it is i'm never going to be able to pick the exact tops i'm never going to pick the exact bottoms i just need to be thereabouts and i still think gala has a lot more to do uh, a lot further to go upwards once the market starts to heat up but the the metaverse i think is definitely having a cooling off period at the moment how much lower it can go we'll have to wait and see but look, lots of double digit, well not lots, but we've got a good couple of double digit uh, losses there and lots of high single digit losses as well. Now, what we need to do is move on to the Bitcoin chart because this is really what I follow and I've told you that many a times to work out where crypto is going. <sighs> follow Bitcoin, look at that red candle. Boom, came back down, broke through this kind of resistance, uh, sorry, support line. And now has already started to make its way back up. But look at that. It went straight through the $53,000 mark. It got down to 51,000 sort of 500 thereabouts. Maybe a little bit more. Let's go. 51,600 and sort of $22. So if you had your buy orders in, that's nice. Now, again, I'm not sure that we're completely out of this yet. I think it's definitely possible that we're going to possibly come down to here. Not saying we are going to. I'm just not going to be surprised if we don't come down to kind of 40 something thousand. It's going to be a big shakeout to scare people. But it's also, as I said, people taking profits because it's that time of the year. They want to go on a nice holiday. They're really, you know, really up. And the big hedge funds and things like that, they have to take profits to, you know, pay their members and pay their taxes and things like that. So I'm definitely thinking we could see Bitcoin coming down into the 40s. Now, I'm not saying it's not out of the question that we couldn't get down here, even down to the $36,000, $35,000 levels. Maybe probably more around about here, I think thirty-eight. But again, a big shakeout. It could be scary. I hope that's not the case. I hope that just small amounts of profits are made. And again, maybe we're going to push down to sort of somewhere more around about here, $50-ish thousand dollars. But... I mean, we've already made it down to 53, so I'll push down to kind of, you know, some old resistance support level. So down to, you know, the 50-ish, $49,000 level is not going to surprise me. My personal advice, never financial advice, is put in some buy orders if Bitcoin's what you want to buy. Again, go find other coins that you're into, find resistance uh, support levels and start to buy in. For me, I already have really good position in Bitcoin. It's not to say I won't continue to buy more, but I don't need to go as heavy into Bitcoin at the moment. But if we are in a general, uh, going into a legit bear market, then I'm really not going to focus on any other coins except for Bitcoin, because that is the... It's the reserve at the moment. So that's the one I want to focus on. 
So when the market does turn, again, I'll be focusing more on stable coins once we really do, or not so much stable coins, but cash and stable coins, whatever you want to call it. If we legitimately go into a legit bear market, I'm going to be putting about 20% of my, you know, sort of weekly fortnightly money into Bitcoin. And the other 70 to about 80% will be in stable coins and cash sitting on the side waiting for when I feel like a bottom is finally in. And that's when I will start to deploy a lot more of the cash, but never all the cash, because if I'm wrong and it continues to go down, well, I wanna make sure that I have cash. Once I feel that we've got to a bottom and it'll be simply searching the charts, I will deploy 50% of whatever cash I have at that stage. Let the other 50% ride. And I'm always gonna to wanna to have, you know, X amount of cash. People say a good amount is 10 to 20%. I don't have 10 to 20% in cash at the moment. Uh, I have very little amounts because I've been buying dips and things like that. But if we do go into a bigger dip, then again, I won't be buying much at all. I'll really just buy a little bit of Bitcoin here and there and wait for a bottoming formation. And then I will start to deploy that cash. And not so much into Bitcoin. I'm not saying I won't. I'm always generally sort of buying Bitcoin. But once I feel like a bottom is in for Bitcoin, that's when I'm going to aggressively start to go after uh, altcoins, ones that I, again, think have you know good longevity and things like that. But anyway, I've been uh, off track a little bit. So again, we came through this resistance uh, support line. Sorry, support line, not resistance, because it's been support. But it looks like we're already pushing back up. So will this hold? That'll be interesting. And like I said, I'm not going to be surprised if we see Bitcoin come down into this $50,000 range over this weekend. But then I'd be hoping for it to bounce. But look, again, I'm not going to be surprised if we don't see Bitcoin down around about here. Again, a big shakeout for the end of the year to make everyone think, oh, it's a legit bear market. It's over and done for. And 36000 from the top, if we go from here, down to 36,000, 50% correction, thereabouts. Again, I'm not saying it's gonna make it to exactly this. It could come a little bit lower, but basically a 50% correction, that would not surprise me at all. Just something I'm keeping an eye out for. All right, couple of stories uh, I wanna have a look at. So we talked about the Badger Dow hack the other day. Seems Celsius may have lost some money in it. So crypto lender Celsius ad admits that it has some losses. Now, Celsius hasn't lost 120 million. Uh, the 120 million was the Badger Dow hack and the company hasn't come out and specified exactly how much it lost. But some have speculated that roughly $51 million was lost based on blockchain data. So that is uh, not great for Celsius, uh, but... Alex Mashinsky has come out and said the hack itself wasn't the Celsius platform. It was from money that was put into Badger Dow. So, you know, the bulk of funds, well, what they actually said is we'll read the tweet. So Celsius was made aware that the Badger platform had suffered an attack of unauthorized withdrawal of funds. The attack did not occur on the core Celsius platform. No Celsius client and uh, user assets were affected. So that's pretty good, but in the end, you know, Celsius have still lost some money, uh, and that is something you need to be aware of, uh, you know, when investing in cryptocurrencies and particularly using, you know, DeFi platforms and things like that. Hence, why I like to focus on the older ones that haven't had any issues. That's not to say that they won't ever have any issues. Just so far, they've generally done pretty good. I spoke about this uh, a while ago, uh, and like I said, Ave is my number one. DeFi pick. So Aave's push for institutional DeFi gets a second KYC, so know your customer, provider proposal. Security token, uh, security token, oh God, I'm struggling. Security token platform Securitize is looking to join Fireblocks in offering ID tools for Aave's Arc. It was originally going to be called Aave Pro, but now it's Aave's Arc. So the firm regulated, so that is securitized, not Ave Arc. The firm regulated by the Securities and Investments Commission and a holder of US broker dealer and alternative trading system licenses provided its Know Your Customer solution to DeFi lending platform Ave on Friday. Now, providing KYC when investors are buying or trading tokenized securities is something Securitize has been doing in line with regulators since 2017. A lot of people are very anti, 
you know, kind of establishment and, you know, sec- you know, regulation and all that kind of stuff. But the fact is we need this stuff to go mainstream. Regulation is a good thing as long as it's not over uh, regularized. God, I'm struggling with my English. As long as, as long, oh God, as long as it is not over regular, uh, over regulate, regulated. God, I'm just it's very early in the morning <laughs> here in Australia. All right, so yeah, we just don't want uh, it to be heavy-handed uh, regulatory, you know, reform and things like that. But are they? They are going in the right direction. I can't. I haven't heard information of any other DeFi platforms going along that route. And like I said, Aave, they have a financial uh, license over in Europe. They're looking to get one in Asia, and then it'll just be a matter of time until they basically get ones all over the world and eventually in the US. And imagine when big institutional banks and things like that can start to get yield from Aave because they can't get it anywhere else. It's just, it's impossible for whatever reason the system is broken, but they can come to Aave. And apparently, again, the rumor is that Aave's KYC one or the ARC program, again, I thought it was going to be called Pro for a while there, they're going to be offering 4%. You can get, you know, 10% from Celsius and BlockFi and things like that. But, you know, again, the rumor is that that's going to get kind of knocked on the head. Aave is going to have KYC and all the rest of it, and they're going to offer 4%. So 4% will be the, the going rate. Now, it's a little bit disappointing considering we're at about 10, but I, I tell you what, 4% is better than the 0.025% that banks are basically offering here in Australia. And there's places overseas where apparently the, there are negative interest rates. If you have money cash sitting in the bank, they're actually charging you for leaving it with them. So very, very interesting. Now, again, Aave, I've been speaking about this. Here's the dollar chart. Now, it used to be Aave Lend. We don't have data for that. I mean, you can find it, but this is where it is. Pumped up, and look, it got up to like $700. It's came down as low as 183 but here is a mark that it's bounced off a few times. Bounced off there, broke through, came back, bounced off, and look where we are now. Now, I'm not saying Aave can't go lower. It absolutely can, and particularly if the market gets hit really hard. But for me, it's just looking like this is a buying opportunity here. I'm not saying it's the best. I'm not saying it uh, couldn't be the worst either. We'll have to wait and see. But for me, I am buying Aave. It is one of the coins that I am buying at the moment. I mean, lots of things are down at the moment, so I do want to get a better position in the metaverse. So the coins that I bought, Wax, Gala, uh, things like that, I am going to continue to dollar cost average into those because I need a better space unless we truly go into a bear market, like I said before. But Aave, I just think this is the blue chip. And if big banks around the world start to use Aave, we're not talking billions of dollars, we're talking possibly trillions of dollars coming in. And that will, in my opinion, never financial advice, send the price of the Aave token rocketing up, personal opinion. All right, again, we spoke about uh, it against ETH. Now it has set in a new low, I thought it would bounce and hold it hasn't continues to go lower but that's more so that the price of ethereum is going up not so much that uh the price of Aave is simply dumping because again we go back to here it has been coming down but it does seem to be holding uh you know that kind of 200 ish dollar level thereabouts not saying it can't come down to again maybe 180 but around here seems to be a good buying price now ethereum has been dropping as well uh, over the last few days we went from 4900 to 4300 so you know you need to keep that in mind but basically Aave at the moment yes it is setting a new low but i don't think it's dead based on this news and then we can go to uh Aave against Bitcoin. Again, I get the feeling like it's going to settle somewhere around about here. Could be wrong. Maybe it's going to come down to here, but it's risk to reward. I don't think we're coming down here. That's only happening if it's a bear market. I think we're more likely to kind of level out somewhere around about where we are. So for Ethereum, based on uh, Bitcoin, we definitely could come a little bit lower, but I think we're closer to the bottom. And then once we make that move up, again, risk to reward so the downside is maybe oh sorry i can't do that but anyway 
the upside is 460% if we get back to old all-time highs against Ethereum. And then the downside is maybe we got to come down like this. So maybe 20%. Again, never financial advice, just as something I'm keeping in mind. So the downside is maybe another further 20, maybe 30, 40%, who knows? And that's against Ethereum. That's not in the dollar. And that means Ethereum could, you know, go on a, ro uh, a run and go upwards while Aave continues to go down. But risk to reward is for me, I'm thinking, all right, risk is maybe sort of 30%, it may be even 40%, who knows? But reward was 400%. So that is what I'm looking at. And again, I just get the feeling like this is the better chart to work out how much lower we might go. And I think maybe Aave has to come back down here and retest this an old all-time high because it does look like it's bouncing around here before it starts to fire up. And again, it is this kind of news where, you know, Aave is getting ready to be, you know, have AML, KYC and things like that. And the first DeFi platform and I'm not saying it's going to be Aave, but if Aave is it, that gets the institutions putting their money in there to earn a yield, I think will be huge, absolutely massive. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment because the market's down and I'm not going to be surprised if we don't go lower. Keep your wits about you, have your buy orders in. Uh, again, never financial advice, you do you. And I'll see you next time.